Oh, hello, thank you for all coming. My daughter said to me last night, aren't you scared, Mum? I said, well, when there were only 15 people coming, I wasn't scared, but 80? And so 3.30 in the morning, I was a bit scared. So I'm just a normal person. And what I'm here to do today is to raise awareness and perhaps share some of your stories about finance and so on. And also put them together in a lucid way so we all have something to aim for at the end. Aiming is really important. I'd really like you all to have one of the brown bags that are at the doorway so that you've got a notebook and a pen because you'll need that during this little workshoppy part of the, of the, of the operation. I'll tell you the first part of the story because my friends laugh at me because I say, yes, I was poor. I was really poor. I, I started off in the UK and my, my mum worked in a factory. My dad put up telegraph poles. Uh, that's where they started off. I'm, Hello. Um, and yes, we were poor. We were we were living in a in a housing commission house, which is nothing wrong with that. We, but we didn't have a house of our own. My dad didn't buy his own house until he retired at 65. So we started off poor. And I was thinking through why I have the financial ethics I've got now. And I think one of the big things is because they were very frugal with money, and they didn't buy anything they couldn't afford. Today, it's much harder to do that. And one of the things my daughter also pointed out this morning before I came away was, okay, Mum, you came from that time where, number one, you could have free sec uh, tertiary education. Yeah, that makes a difference. Number two, you were in a stable situation with your parents who both stayed and nurtured you and stayed with you until you had gone away from home. Very unusual these days. There was plenty of work, Mum, when you were coming through. And it wasn't just casual work, it was work for life. It was work from, you know, woe to go. And these are the things she pointed out to me this morning. She said, people are not in the same situation, especially young people who are coming through now. And it's far more difficult to manage when you haven't got a certainty. You haven't got a, a future. You haven't got what's coming next. So I said, okay, doesn't matter though, we can all actually implement the same financial things as we did. Yeah, I think we can. Because that, that inner, oh, I'm not going to carry on with that. We'll come back to that later. I have temptations in my life, things I want to do. Things I want to do to make me feel better for myself. Could you, on your piece of paper, put down one thing that tempts you to use money that probably you shouldn't be using? What's one thing? Is it um, a new appliance for the home? Is it is it a toy for you know? Is it is it is it uh, soft furnishings? You know, my friend goes out and buys sheets all the time. Sheets. Um, and uh, or is it or is it food? Really nice food. Oh yeah, that really expensive Meredith goat's cheese is twenty dollars a jar, but it's really yummy. Is it food? Is it going out? Is it socialising? Going out? Is that what you'd like to spend your money on? What's your temptation? Oh yes, hang it all. I'll buy that new dress. Hang it all. Those shoes are just so good. What is your one temptation? What's your one thing that will say, oh, hang it all, doesn't matter, I haven't got the money, but... Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to home you in on what it is. Uh, Jan's written down all of the above. <laughs> so so, so she's, got, she's got everything going for her here, she's got every single thing going for her. Is there, uh, can, can anyone, uh, you know, this is just, a, it's just between you and me, no one else is listening. All right, can you tell me, have you got one thing that you really tempt you? Nothing. Good. That, you and I are on the same page. For me, travel is my hang it all. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to do that. Oh, you no. Know. Yeah. One for you. Shopping. There you go. Shopping. Uh, uh, plaza shopping? Going into a shopping plaza? Yeah. Yeah. Out. Shopping. Anybody else got something different? Have you something different? Animals, very big. If you've got a horse, who's got a husband or who has themselves got a boat? Oh, yes. 
just want to put the money in and send it out to sea, really. I mean, it's one of those things. So we have our temptations. Can you tell me why do you think that gives you pleasure? Why does that thing give you pleasure? Do you want to look better? Do you want your home to be more homely? Do you want your horse to be better fed? Do you want do you want it to be the best horse in the neighbourhood? What what are we what are we what's that temptation for? Your yours and mine's really, really pure. Yeah, we're just pure in our temptation, yeah. <laughs> yeah, experience. But I think we have to go back to why we need these things in our life, why we need those and what the temptations are. And the first point in being financially savvy, I think is recognising those temptations, those needs, and going, no, not at the moment, not now, and having a goal to aim towards that's going to be something else. Do you know what I'm saying? No, not, it's the aware, um, it's the awareness of what we're doing. It's the awareness that's really, really important. Okay, so I'll go on. Um, my daughter said, have you got some palm cards? I said, no. So I got my needle. That's the first one. Poor. <laughs> so, the next one is, um, as you're writing those things down, could you possibly write one thing that you've got, that you do, that helps you to save some money? That helps you to, you know, yeah, I've got the why, the impulse. Put me one thing down on your piece of paper that says, hmm, what? Do you do that saves you money? What have you got one thing that you go, oh, yeah, every time I do that, I'll put some money in the practical thing, a practical thing, something really practical. Because we're going to be sharing these at the end anyway, because it's really important that you actually home in to other people's ideas too. It's great. You've got one thing that you do to save money? Home cooking can get a bit boring after a while. You know, I come home if I have been having a couple of days' work. You know, I come home at the end of the day and say, "Oh, what's in the freezer?" You know, you don't really want to. Yeah, I agree with you. Home cooking is wonderful. Anything else? What do you do? Turn powerpoints off, and that sounds very simple. I've actually saved enough money to put solar panels on. And I actually now have got a readout every day of how much electricity is used when. And I use an awful lot of night with, uh, at night with the PowerPoints on, charging my phone now I should be doing during the day, not at night time. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's really with a with soul. Uh, anything else? What have you got there? Um, a spreadsheet. <laughs> a spreadsheet? What is a spreadsheet? Okay, that's very uh, very technical of you. Have you got it on your on your computer at home? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So a, a, a spreadsheet, fantastic. If you are computer savvy and have got some mathematical skills, that's a great thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's very easy to change. I'll just delete that one. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I agree. But it is really good if you can, because that I went to a financial because I was scared of being a pensioner. I was scared of retiring, and I thought I better go and find somebody who's going to help me here. So I did go to someone, a superman, who actually gave me some insights into what to do with my money. And the first thing he did said he said, put down every single thing that you need to pay each month. Write it down. How much on average will you pay on this? Is and he did a spreadsheet. He was very clever, like you. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that spreadsheet idea is a really good one. And I can first of all share this with you. One of the big things for me to to be financially sound is I have deductions made every month. My rates bill, mind you, I am going to have to put up my. Uh, Extra, yes, that's right. It'd have to be another fifty dollars a month to go into my rates bill account. Um, but rates, insurances, car rego, um, what else? Do I do? Electricity, not a lot now. You see, now I've got the solar panels on. Cut down my electricity bill very, very, very strongly. So that's a good way to go. Um, but those are the sorts of things that go out every month. And another little tip from me. 
the thing that I've actually done just recently is stopped paying Medibank private. Now, because I'm retired, yes, because I'm retired, I have no tax breaks at all from Medibank private, none, by being on, in a private um, scheme. So what I did, I said, right, it's costing me $140 a month for the hospital cover. I feel we've got a really good hospital here in Yapoon. We've got a great emergency service. I'm not going to pay an extra $120. But I thought, oh, those, those extras, whoa, that's really good. The extra care, all right, I pay $27.50 a month. All right, so you multiply that by 12. <laughs> you multiply, you can do a spreadsheet. <laughs> you can, who's the financial whiskey? How much? I, I, I put it down about 330. All right, ready. Ambulance is covered 100%. My optical, change my glasses every year because I always lose them or run over them with my car or a lawnmower uh, or anything else that's really nice. Um, uh, my dental, at 70% up to $750 a year. The physio, hydro and pilates, unfortunately not the other things. A massage, I get $100. The physical, physio, hydro and pilates is $450 a year. So I can come out with a cover with that, with that $27.50 a month. I'm covered for $1,500 on Iomi. The first time I think I've got the better of Medibank Prime. I pay $330 a year and I get $1,500 worth of, of medical care. So that to me was really, really good. Uh, a, little, a little bit of uh, saving there. Yes? If I go to hospital, I'm not going to have a private room. I'm not going to be in a private space. I've had two elective surgeries done in my life. And in both cases, Medibank Private came, yeah? And they paid some of it. And then afterwards, when I paid $2,000 for my special ladies' operation, um, uh, they said, oh, if you'd gone to the car, it would have been cheaper. I didn't realize you had to shop around for the cheapest medical deals. And do that, everybody. Please do. If you've got any elective surgery and you've got a private health care, shop around. Don't just go to the per first person. Because I could have saved myself $1,500 by going to Mackay. So, as far as I'm concerned, that's, that's the thing. I'm not going to go to Medibank Private if they're not going to give me the same deal wherever I go. No, I'm not interested. So, I, I just opted out. But I do put $100 a month away. <laughs> so, if anything did come up, because I'm getting old, um, if, if anything did come up, I'd still have some money. Yeah. Now, that's something, my dear Hills, you're going to have to investigate. Because I don't know whether or not you can have the extras cover. I haven't, got, I haven't got the other cover anymore. I stopped it totally. But see if you can just get the extras cover. What are you talking about? I've got Medibank Private, what they call it extras, don't they? They call it the, what is it called extras? It's the, 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 the dental and, and, and optical. It's the extras. I haven't got a hospital cover, but I don't know whether you have to have originally have an, a hospital cover and then you can elect to do the other one. They suggested this to me actually. You can't. You don't have to. Oh, great. Well, see, there you go. So that's a good way to go, everybody. If you don't need it, if you don't. Yeah. So you can. Is it all health funds? They've gotten the mass. Oh no, massage is still on there. If it's a, it's a, a therapeutic massage, I can still get my massages done. But you can't get naturopathy. We can't get um, uh, any of the other extras, which is a shame. All right, I've got another little cue on my little pad here. What I'd like you to do is to also write down now. I know it's a lot of writing for you. I'm sorry about your pen being used. What I would like you to write is the biggest mistake you have made with money in your life. The biggest mistake. Now, there must be one where you went and you went, oh! The biggest mistake. 
Was it going into a rental property when you could have bought? Was it, was it buying a car that you thought was a bit dicey and it turned out to be a, a lemon? Was, what is your biggest financial mistake? And don't say leaving home. <laughs> yep. Oh. That's a big one. All right. There's only one gentleman in the audience, two gentlemen in the audience at the moment. The lady at the front, a lady at the front said, my husband. Ex-husband. Okay. Um, I've got, no, I don't need a show of hands. I'm sure there are an awful lot of people there who believe that the husband in their life is not the best financial wizard in the, in the country. And when mine left, I can honestly say I took charge of the finances. And since then, I've never been in debt. So it, I think it's one of those things that women are very capable of doing financial stuff. It's whether or not we choose to. And one of my big things for my husband was, great guy, love him, still love him, kind, generous guy, no idea about finances, none whatsoever, and he's carried on in the same way, bought things which are lemons, and he's carried on doing the same. Poor, that's his path. But I wanted to give him that manly feeling of controlling finances. That's the sort of era I came from. I wanted him to take over that control. I wanted him to be in charge of the money because I knew that's what my dad always used to do. And that was the silliest thing I ever did because he did lose in quite a bit of debt. So, um, yeah, so I think that's quite valid. I think it's quite valid. Any other reasons, any other big mistakes financially? Any other big, have you got a big financial mistake? Yeah. What was uh, Absolutely. And the point is, again, my, my, my daughter said this morning, when you have little money, you grab at things. When you haven't got a lot to spend, it's far more difficult for you. And I agree with that. I've been, I've been really down at the bottom. And when you haven't got a lot of money, you've got very, your choices are limited. Your choices are narrowed when you haven't got a lot of money. And that's exactly what people do. I did it. Mine felt part as well. Anybody else? What's what's your biggest financial? Um, buying things on rental programs. Anybody else done that? Mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. And by the time you come out at the end, the thing that you've got is out of date anyway. Yeah, I agree. Any, anybody else? Another one? Not managing, Not managing super. Until my husband left me, I had no idea what was in my super. And when I did get in there, I realised I can make a difference. I can get, I can be independent. Yeah, absolutely. Getting divorced and not fighting for my share of 24 year marriage. That's pretty big for a lot of people who are going through divorces, going through separations. It's not, as a woman, often we actually stand back and say, take it all, take it. I can't be bothered to fight like you're fighting me. I can't be bothered. And to get good representation, I've had a friend down in um, New South Wales, and she's gone through a horrendous, it was a, it was a, a de facto relationship. It took her seven years and $30,000 in order to sort out the money situation there. And I think in our cases, a lot that's, that's to do with poor representation and expensive representation. We should have a far greater access to cheaper representation. I agree with that very much. When my husband left me, he started off, he started off as a, um, a student pilot, so I was supporting him. He had a $13,000 debt. When, when he left me, all right, he was, learning, he was earning over $200,000 a year. So I said, I have followed you around the world. I have put aside my career. I have brought up our children. I haven't got enough superannuation when I finish to keep me supported, come to the party. And he was very, it was very, he's a kind man. I, I did choose good, really, you know, he was a very, very kind man. So he actually, he actually did come to the party. He gave me the house. He gave me the house, which I later sold to the lovely lady over there. Uh, and he gave me the house, so I came out with the house, which was fabulous. So, but it's very unusual. 
I don't think there's very many people in the room who concur with that. So yeah, any big mistake? Oh, I'm not going to ask you because you've got your you've got your spreadsheet. Big mistake? That, that again? I bought a unit sight unseen. Didn't realise it didn't have it didn't have any bedrooms. It was just a bed sit. My father-in-law had checked it out. Oh, it's all it's lovely, bum. Oh, it's great. It's great. It's really good. It hadn't got any bedrooms. It just beds. Middle of Melbourne. It could have been worth a bomb now. But I mean, but I'm, I know what you're saying. Body corporate fees. Not yeah. I agree. And then, therefore, your your investment is then not as, not as much. Okay? Yeah. Anybody else? Can you share a real big mistake? Um, um, just assuming that house prices always appreciate and they don't you know, hold houses otherwise. Um, and also, you know, and that's for a lot of people these days. It's not just you, know, it's not just you. it's so many people who have gone through that. Uh, can I say, though, I think we're very fortunate to have a house at all. And for me, I, from where I came, I didn't expect ever to have a house of my own. Uh, but I think that's amazing. But it's true. They don't always increase. Oh, if you're 150, that's okay when you're 150. You're not. Yeah, that's another one. One more, one more really devastating mistake you've made financially. Absolutely, and family family get-togethers, you know, yeah, we'll all have, you know, we'll, we'll go in this together and it's fine. We need it all written down on the dotted line that I am not liable for this part of this debt that you're accruing here, you know? I, I think that's right, you go into business with people and sometimes they're not as honest as you are, and it's very difficult. Family, family members, I, I, I'm, and so many people talk to me about that, you know. You, you've been in there with a family member and, and they go, uh, they, they go off and leave you with the mess. That perhaps they haven't got as much resilience or, or as... Uh, yeah, anyway. So we've all made mistakes, all right? Mine, all right, very quickly, was buying a combi van. I wanted my, my beautiful combi van to drive around because I thought it's really slick, you know. Right. And I sent my mechanic friend off whilst I was overseas. He said, one's just come up. He said, it's fantastic. He'd been looking for a long time. He went down, picked it up, brought it back, and when I came back from my holiday, um, I realised I couldn't actually depress the clutch because it was too far away from my little legs. So I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to change gear in this combi, and he put a he put a little step on it so I could actually sort of reach that. And then when he tweaked all the gears and everything, we realised that the reason he'd sold it so cheaply it wasn't that cheap, but was because the gearbox was stuffed and he retweaked the whole gearbox so it would change gear when it was being brought back. As soon as it was taken back to its original gear settings, I had, I had the fourth gear when I got there dropping out every time we got over 30 kilometers an hour. So the fourth gear was there, you know, rum, 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 boom. And I was left going, Nee. And somebody kind up at the Volkswagen Center up in Rocky said, oh, you can always use a knocky strap. Strap it back. Strap it. In a, in a combi van with <laughs> the car actually change gear in a, a, a rocky strap. <laughs> yeah, um, so I sold it on. But I had that amount of money in my account before I went out there. Um, can anybody see what we're, we're going into a, into a space where we're actually drawing out information, but we have all got an idea of what we should be doing. Checking first. Trying it out, have it on trial, get it on paper, research it more. All these things could have stopped some of these, these things that we do that are impulse. And mine was impulse, a combi, impulse. How can I do that? <laughs> anyway, so what the lesson is to learn there is be aware again. Be aware. Be aware you've got a temptation. Be aware you've got an impulse. Be aware that you have to be aware when you're going into buying something that's really expensive. And be, don't be impulsive. Impulse buying doesn't work. And I think that's what's happening with all these people that are being scared. With really intelligent people. 
Yeah. With, you know, millions of dollars. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the money is the driver. We want to make more money. We don't want to be sitting as we are now. We'd like to make more money than we've got at the moment. Um, some great ways of making money. Some great ways of making money. Um, and I'll show you a few examples. Has everyone got an idea of what the point I'm trying to make at the moment? And uh, as I say, I'm I am not the person standing. I'm the person standing here that's made all the mistakes that you've made. But I would say now I am financially on a good path. I'm never in debt. Never in debt. And that was my determination not to be after that marriage. Never in debt. So, what are some of the ways that we do? What are some of the ways that we, we, we use in order to... I um, don't know how I'm doing for time at the moment, actually. Yeah. Ten. Okay. All right, some of the things... All right. You can show me a label now, Jen. Oh, uh, that, that was that was from Vinny, and everyone asked me. I only had to, I, I wanted to be like the Queen today, Glenda. Want, you know, you know, the Queen goes around in very bright clothes so she can be seen. I thought, I'm, I'm doing the speech or speaking to. So I should have a bright coloured hat on as well, really, but nothing. But um, no, I I dress from the up shop. I don't usually wear clothes like this, really. How much was yours? This is six dollars. Okay, yesterday. I was seven. You see this the day before yesterday, much cheaper. Wonderful shoes, look them up online. I always do if I get good shoes. I love these shoes. Aren't oh, they nice? No. Yeah, leather. And four dollars. <laughs> oh. this, this is this, apart from being very aware of things, I always go to the up shops. You can have a little oh, a little jacket. I don't go for tacky stuff though. When I go to the up shop I go for labels. Lovely little jacket, you know. I'm just showing what you can get. Oh, I've got a. These I've had. These I've had. I love them. I've had them for 10, 15 years. Buy good schmutty, you get them. You know, they last forever. Um. Oh, I've been looking for one of these again. I don't just buy anything. I usually go in there to buy. That's a nice little hoodie, uh, cotton, uh, sports girl, uh, four dollars. Um, which I really love. Um, and if anyone wants this, you can have it. I got it yesterday, and the lady knocked it down in price to nothing because it got a small mark on it in the op shop. It's a Maggie Tabera. They're expensive. You know, not any old cheap So I bought that one. Well, I didn't buy that one. And that's linen. It's linen. And I bought this one. And she said, oh, do you like Maggie Tabra? So it's a bit big for me, but I'll wear it. Um, linen, Maggie Tabra, beautiful. Hangs really nicely. Yeah, it's hanging, isn't it? Uh, that's right. Impulse buying? No! Impulse buying at, all right. The two, the two articles of clothing with nothing and this cost me $3.50 each. I mean, if you went out and bought anything in the shop, how much would it cost? Goodness me. Uh, oh, a nice pair of pants here. Now, there are one or two things. Who does crafts to save some money? Yeah? Do you save money by doing your craft? Yeah? Plants. Absolutely, and I've seen, I don't know who's taking them into the salvos, they've got some beautiful little succulents in china cups, and they look fantastic. So somebody's just gone around, that's a good idea. Anybody else do any craft? What do you do? So, and even though people say, oh, you don't sell your clothes anymore, don't cost two dollars for a t-shirt. I've got a whole, I've actually made a bedspread, my mother-in-law gave me some lovely material, and I'm no sewer. But I got a second-hand sewing machine from the op shop, uh, and it cost me $12. You sound like my mum, and that's what she used to do. You know, it came, I, I was there just after the war, and she used to get large things, you know, with gentlemen shirts, and make them for my brothers, and make dresses for me. That's lovely. That's really nice thing to do. 
Um, but it's, it's, it's recycling at its best. If you can recycle a small plant, if you can actually get a piece of material and change it into something else by using your sewing machine. I'm useless with a sewing machine. My, my craft activities are really useless. <laughs> and uh, All right, so, okay. So it was an old cotton rug. And I actually unpicked it all and got all the wool together into <laughs> walls. And it's all cotton. I thought, oh, that would be wonderful. I can make a, another rug with it. I'll crochet it. Um, I've got an awful lot of poofy covers. I can't crochet. <laughs> so what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to unpick this again and I'm going to try again. I'm going to learn how to crochet before I try the next time. <laughs> Um, yeah, they, they all go in, you know, so. but I am good at this. What about exchanging, everybody? I'm good at marmalade. I'm a palm. Good at marmalade. And other people are good at other things, so I swap. And I got a good swap the other day, and they label theirs properly. Yeah, look at that. This is beetroot chutney. So I see, beetroot chutney. So I, swapping and sharing. For me, community is very, very important, and I do swap and share with friends. And I think that, again, is another good way to save yourself some money. I suppose I've got to come to some sort of conclusion here now. Bartering. I love bartering. Um, and I did that for a while. We had a, a thing at Farnborough School when I was teaching there, and some of the prizes were um, work for other people. And that was a good way to get a prize, you know. And I, I offered them um, four hours of garden work. And so the person was really happy with that prize. I'm going to go through the list that I had of saving money. My daughter's latched onto this and she's now got getting, she's downloading the books. She's got there's loads of audio books and she loves podcasts and whatever. And the DVDs now, which is new, you can actually get the DVDs and download the DVDs. You can't download them, you can listen to them, you can stream them. So, that again, free. Look for anything free in the area. And there's always free activities somewhere. So, op shopping is one of my favourite ways of saving money. If you want to write these down. My monthly deductions to pay my outgoings is my biggest way of saving. I know that every time I get one of those monstrous bills, it's either been paid for or I've only got a couple of hundred dollars to pay. So, monthly deductions. Um, oh, this was when I was trying to saving for my combi. <laughs> my saving. Uh, we never got the right amount of money in here, but I still use this because this is my go-to jar. If I'm going, oh, I can't really, can't really afford to go out for dinner. I can't really. Yes, I can because I put my two dollars in here. Someone's putting five dollars in a jar. Some. Do you do that? Do you? Do... Oh my goodness, that's a heck of a lot of... I can afford that. Yeah, yeah, and it is fabulous. And when my daughter first came, she couldn't afford anything because she'd just come back from a really bad relationship. She, uh, she said, I want to go to yoga. Mama said, go to the boxy jar. You can go to yoga. You can go... It's like Cinderella on the ball, isn't it? But that's a really good way of saving. I find that doesn't cost me any effort at all. Oh, excuse me, are you a mathematician as well? <laughs> this one contains $64 when it's full. $64 when it's full. So it's really good. I don't think it's ever been full though. Um, I've just started food planning. My daughter's just found out that she's gluten and, and lactose intolerant, so we've got to have a whole new way of working. But we are now food planning, night by night, day by day. I really save when I don't go into the supermarket too often. I save lots of money. So for me, food planning, it may seem, oh gosh, you've got to, you don't want to stick to it, but you know what I'm saying? As long as you've got just an idea and you've got the makings of something in your fridge. But it saves you going back in there, because I always buy at least one thing, possibly two things, that aren't on my list when I go there. All right. um, I have got my hundred dollars that is now my Medibank private cover. I put it into another savings account that I don't touch. It hasn't got a card. So it goes in there. The only way I can do it is by transferring that money out. So it's far less accessible. So money, card, no. 
if you've got a cloud, you use it. Um, ask really good people for good advice. I've got that lovely Sue over there, her husband, and he put on my solar panels for me, and he's a great operator. And I've known him for a long time, and I trust him. And I said, Jeff, they've got these specials on now for the batteries, and they're saying they're going to give you extra money if you put a back, uh, uh, you know, for, for your battery. He said, don't do it yet. Wait. Because it's going to get cheaper, and they're going to get better. Wait. If you can wait. I trust him, you know, and he's giving me advice. I would have gone, oh, yeah. Let's get the batteries so I can put my air conditioning on at night. Um, so take, and I've got a good mechanic, and I've got a good plumber, and I've got, you know, so get good tradies around you. There's some fantastic tradies in your room. Fantastic tradies. Get a good one. Get reliable ones. Ask your mates, who worked well for you? You know, it doesn't have to be cheaper. It just has to be good. Um, take advantage of free, free events. Use our local markets. And use our local producers for food. You get uh, five five dollars on the market last Saturday. I got a great big one kilo bag of beautiful sweet, ch uh, but little cherry tomatoes. Beautiful. No, absolutely fantastic. Five dollars for a kilo. You try to get that in any of the supermarkets. Can't do it. Go to the market. Um, sell on marketplace or gum tree. I'm going later on today. I've been saving up. I'm going later on today. I, I notified a lady today. I was going around to see. I needed cane furniture. My cane furniture on my on my veranda. I've got a veranda at the back. Um, I bought from the dump, <laughs> and I did it up, <laughs> and it's been there for four years. So I thought, all right, if you can put the money on one side, you can buy yourself some new cane furniture. So uh, today I'm going to have a look, and usually the cane furniture I'm looking at with this lady probably about five hundred dollars a chair. She's got two chairs and two little tables for $250. So I've more than half the cost I would have paid, and they look lovely. I'll see how they are. Keep an eye out for specials, whatever the specials are. Grow your own, make your own, share with others. And the less you can go shopping, the better. So find things to do that aren't shops. You know, you're out there, you'll buy. Um, this is the last thing I'm going to ask you to do. Choose one, one thing only that could be, from all the ideas we've had so far, could be your one way of saving some money. Your one goal that you could actually achieve. Nothing that's hairy-fairy, nothing that's too much out there. We're not all going to go to Bali next week. Um, something that you could really use to save yourself some money. Anyone want to share that goal? You got one? You got a goal? You got a goal? Uh, yeah, it is shared with my husband, but we, we have a little head for the great Well done. And That's... we've got a budget, but we know we've... So you're now budgeting for that purpose because you've got a final destination. Have you got an idea what you'd like to do? Uh, come to the community garden on the corner of Ross and Power Street. We've just started the community garden. Jack's Paddock. Jack's Paddock. We just put our first little bit of garden in at the weekend. So come. It's great fun. Um, if you're in the centre of town, it's as you're going up towards Brendan's, that's um, on that roundabout. If you were, you're not, don't go towards Brendan's, you turn right along Power Street. And it's on the corner of Power Street and Moss Street. Go on, we're on, we've got a Facebook page, and the Facebook page tells you. We're going to start growing in that garden. We just started, Jeff. Anybody else? What are you going to do? Anything that you thought you think you could do? Right, there you go. Yeah, pinch it from your kids. That's a great idea. No, you're not going out. It's mine. <laughs> Be me. Okay. I'll say thank you for listening. Thank you for being with me. If you want to ask any questions of me at the end, I'm here. But thank you. You've been a great audience. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Pam.